Uh, hello, dear colleagues. My name is Maria Mikhailova, uh, and I am a master student and a research assistant at the University of Latvia. And my major is uh, international business. And uh, today I would like to introduce you the paper which I was writing with uh, Doctor of Economics, uh, professor at the University of Latvia, Vilta Sloka. Uh, our paper is called Social Entrepreneurship, a Study of Successful Practices. Uh, also, I would like to thank you for having us here at this conference. And uh, let's start our presentation. Uh, the contents of this presentation uh, is following. So firstly, we will talk about materials and methods used for our paper, then introduction to the theme itself. Uh, thirdly, it will be approaches to social entrepreneurship uh, development. Uh, then we will discuss legal structures in the United States and uh, United Kingdom. Uh, also, we will talk about successful strat strategies and uh, practices of United Kingdom and Australia. Uh, and uh, then we will switch to digital marketing for social entrepreneurship in Latvia. And of course, uh, finally, we will provide you with uh, some conclusions and uh, suggestions from our side. Uh, materials uh, and methods used for our work are the following. Uh, firstly, of course, it's analysis of scientific findings uh, on social entrepreneurship and uh, social enterprises. Uh, secondly, it is uh, analysis of policy documents related to this field. Uh, then uh, it is analysis of uh, statistics on social entrepreneurship. Um, regarding the digital marketing, it is, of course, the evaluation of publicly available information uh, for tools uh, used by uh, social enterprises in Latvia. And uh, then definition of further steps, uh, reasons and questions to social enterprise managers uh, and uh, uh, how we can develop uh, social entrepreneurship in Latvia. Uh, so here you may see the defin definition used by OECD since uh, 2010. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to make uh, some introduction to the topic. Uh, the field of social entrepreneurship uh, has attracted attention from many different areas, uh, like policymakers, scientists, some businessmen, and also also general public. Uh, all of them uh, are included in the field of social entrepreneurship, and uh, this concept uh, is an important tool to solve social issues. Of course, uh, society. Uh, just on one hand. Uh, uh, we can involve part of society that usually have different problems with entering labor market. And uh, on, a, on the other hand, we can make these people more satisfied uh, with their lives because they make some contribution to society. Uh, moreover, uh, the social entrepreneurship sector is able to respond uh, to some issues that uh, market and uh, government uh, cannot deal with. And uh, the aim of our paper was to analyze the successful practices of different countries in order to provide countries with less developed social entrepreneurship with some suggestions for improvement. Uh, why is it important uh, to study social entrepreneurship? Well, social enterprises help to tackle social economic and also political issues. Uh, for example, as a solution for social issues, uh, social entrepreneurship apply social inclusion and it provides opportunities for people with uh, disabilities to find, for example, a workplace and at the same time become more included in society. Then as, a, as a, an economic improvement, uh, it is the creation of uh, new job opportunities, also some goods and services, 
to people who cannot afford them. Uh, and uh, from a political perspective, um, it is uh, a social entrepreneurship helps to reduce the governmental burden. Uh, in many ways. And uh, in general, social entrepreneurship helps to become more independent and uh, satisfied with life for almost every person in society. Uh, why is uh, this theme actual nowadays for Latvia? Well, uh, OECD in 2017 uh, have indicated that in Latvia, there are problems with income inequality and uh, uh, there have to be taken some serious uh, policy decisions for improvement of this situation. And one of these steps uh, is support for social enterprises. Uh, in general, experience in social entrepreneurship in many countries uh, have shown uh, very good results. And this experience is analyzed in academic research worldwide. Uh, so we can actually use this experience uh, in order to develop social entrepreneurship in Latvia. Uh, what are different approaches to social entrepreneurship development? Uh, the first one uh, is social economy theory. Uh, that is lied in the basis of European social enterprises. And uh, according to this theory, the third sector is uh, one of the most important and well-developed parts uh, of society. Uh, the third sector should provide people with a broad variety of welfare uh, services. And uh, also in Europe, uh, central and local governments uh, collaborate regularly with um, third sector and as a result more jobs created uh, also welfare provisions provided by third sector uh, on the other hand we may see uh, the model by you know used by the United States and uh, uh, their government used different approach in relation to social enterprises uh, and actually doesn't interfere with the sector. But instead, uh, uh, the third sector cooperates with the market. And uh, as a result, a venture-friendly market um, promotes philanthropism and uh, donations. Yes. And um, the third way is the way of South Korea. Uh, of course, social entrepreneurship there was developed later than in Europe or in the United States, but uh, it is well developed nowadays and we can uh, look at them as an example of successful uh, implementation of social entrepreneurship and uh, they uh, use uh, governmental policies to sponsor social enterprises. Uh, by providing them with some financial and also non-financial support. Uh, secondly, it is mass media and marketing activities that help them to develop uh, this field. And uh, uh, also they, uh, the third sector influences the situation in uh, South Korea as well, uh, but of course less than in Europe because it is not as well developed as in Europe. Uh, so let us switch to the United States legal structure for social entrepreneurship. Well, in general, different legal structures are used for uh, social enterprises worldwide. And uh, for example, the United States does not uh, have a unified law uh, system for social entrepreneurship but uh, still there is an obstacle legal support for them. Uh, and uh, uh, New York University School of Law uh, created uh, so-called uh, uh, social enterprise law tracking. Using this tool, every person can find some 
relevant uh, legislative action across 50 USA states and uh, the District of Columbia. Uh, use, using this tool, it's possible to see uh, the legal structures used by certain states. So depending on the structure, different policies uh, will be applied. And of course, each legal form provides its own statutes. So it means that this form has different policies, different recommendations, also uh, some aid programs and etc. And in, in comparison with the Latvian system, uh, where is one uniform law, US system is uh, more competitive because uh, it is provided with opportunity to choose from uh, uh, different legal forms. Uh, however, it's still difficult to compare, uh, to compare uh, Latvian case and the United States one because uh, the legislation system is totally different in these two countries. So let us uh, look at the UK legal structure. Uh, United Kingdom has a unified law system regarding social entrepreneurship and uh, they set up goals for helping social enterprises to achieve their purposes uh, easier and more effectively since 2015. Uh, a new legal structure was, intro was introduced for social entrepreneurship and it is called Charitable Incorporated Organization. And the, the main benefits uh, of this structure is, first of all, it is legal personality. So charity enterprise can sign contracts, hold property or to sue somebody or something. and uh, of course, it all happens in its own name. And secondly, it is limited li liability. So the liability in the event of bankruptcy of the charitable organization is limited or equal to zero. Uh, and the main aim of this legal form is to avoid unnecessary bureaucracy for social enterprises. And um, uh, it, uh, it really makes this field more attractive uh, to enter. And in Latvia, social enterprises are registered as uh, LLC, limited liability company, and there is no some special structure for them. Uh, but it is possible to consider for Latvia the implementation of uh, some special structure, some special legal structure for social enterprises. Uh, so now let's uh, have a look at the Scotland experience in uh, social entrepreneurship. Uh, in general, uh, there are over 6,000 uh, social enterprises in Scotland, and this field is uh, well developed and well managed there. Um, also, the gross value added uh, in 2019 is 2.3 a billion pounds there, which is a great number. And uh, besides, social enterprises provide more than 88,000 full-time working places. And 33% uh, of them are located in rural areas. So not only big cities uh, are developing uh, from this uh, field. Uh, and only 20% of income is uh, covered by uh, grant funding, which is a really low number. And 6% uh, of uh, social enterprises in Scotland uh, export their goods and services abroad, so meaning they're international companies. And uh, the typical profitability for social enterprises in Scotland is 4.1%. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, yes, so what is next? Uh, what are the social entrepreneurship practices used by Scotland in order to achieve such a great result? Um, as it was already mentioned, uh, for the UK and in general, Scot uh, Scottish social enterprises use special forms uh, of regulation, legal structures which encourage 
which encourage good management. And uh, in, the, in addition, it's interesting fact that more than 60% of board members uh, in Scottish uh, social enterprises are women, and this number is growing. Uh, so the output here is that leadership opportunities in the sector should be equal for everyone. And uh, the third point uh, of uh, the well-functioned sector is the principle of fair payment, of course. So in Scotland, the difference between the lowest and the, high, and the highest pay is only 1 to 2.5, which is uh, definitely not a big gap. And uh, this difference is constant since 2015. Uh, next is that social enterprises in Scotland are progressive employers. Uh, and uh, they are balanced uh, local and foreign labor. And also 56% of all enterprises in this field are hire young labor. So people under the age of 25. Uh, now we are switching to the experience of Australia and to be more exact, uh, Victoria, the state of uh, Australia. And uh, uh, here uh, we can say that Australian uh, state Victoria is the leader uh, in the social entrepreneurship of um, the country. Uh, in general, in Australia, more around uh, 20,000 social enterprises, and a quarter of them are located in the state of Victoria. Uh, and uh, between 2009 and 2014, the social return on government investment in social traders um, and social enterprises were $3.65 for every $1 invested. Um, social traders, it is one of the leading organization who support, uh, who support uh, social enterprises in Australia, providing a diverse range of services, uh, sector growth and uh, development. Uh, so what is the state strategy for social entrepreneurship development? In general, they have three uh, big steps in order to improve social entrepreneurship. First one is increase impact and innovation. Uh, secondly, it's develop business capacity and necessary skills. And finally, improve market access for enterprises. Uh, let us have a bit closer look in each of them. Um, first one, increase impact and innovation. Uh, there is three uh, sub point here. Uh, first is that they want to promote field significance for customer, uh, government and investment, uh, investors. Uh, secondly, it is that uh, social entrepreneurship ecosystem should be uh, more coordinated and uh, connected to a broader business environment. And finally, is that support uh, social entrepreneurship uh, in innovation uh, culture uh, should be developed. Uh, regarding develop business capacity and necessary skills, uh, they also have three sub points here. And the first one is to provide social enterprises with skills and capabilities in order to prepare them for uh, some investment and uh, tender opportunities. Uh, secondly, is to uh, support intermediary uh, services that help uh, social entrepreneurship ecosystem. And thirdly, uh, enlist support of the um, uh, government in the sector development. Uh, and for improved market access for enterprises, they also have three sub points, uh, which are uh, firstly to reduce barriers for functioning of social enterprises in the state of Victoria. Uh, secondly, it is create better access to capital via boosting investment possibilities. And finally, it is to create opportunities to deliver goods and services uh, using some innovative approaches. Uh, with uh, social outcomes. 
And also here I highlighted that universities of the state of Victoria provide different opportunities for social enterprise development, starting from research opportunities uh, and uh, finishing with some uh, courses uh, regarding the um, social entrepreneurship. So they are helping to increase awareness about the field in society. Uh, so now uh, let's switch to digital marketing uh, in the field of social entrepreneurship in Latvia uh, in 2020. And on this graph, uh, you may see the use of um, the website and social media by social enterprises in Latvia. Uh, in, in the research, 117 enterprises uh, were reviewed and availability means uh, the percent of com companies that have a certain, certain parameter. So uh, website, or social media, email, phone number. Uh, and according to the results of this analysis, 66% of companies have a website, which is uh, actually less than expected, and as it is only two thirds of, uh, of the active companies. Uh, by the way, this uh, channel is very important, uh, linked to provide information about any company in the world, modern world, because uh, today it's not only about the younger generation who use internet, but also middle-aged people actively use digital tools and especially internet and websites. And moreover, it is becoming more and more popular to learn computer literacy among the older generation. And uh, it, of course, includes internet. Uh, secondly, social media are used by 60% of the sample. Uh, some com companies prefer to have only social media and do not create their own website, and that, of course, narrow possible auditory. And uh, therefore, fewer people can find enterprise or help to develop and maintain it. Uh, the parameters of email and phone availability uh, correspond uh, in general with the uh, website and social media, media parameters. And, uh, in general, this information is very important when someone needs to contact directly uh, the company. And if uh, there is no email or phone number, in general, it means that the company uh, can, cannot be reached by their auditorium, by their audience. Uh, uh, so let's switch to the next slide. Uh, and on this graph, you may see uh, the social media activity status. Uh, it is the data for, uh, for August 2020. Uh, and uh, it means that among 60% among of companies who have social media accounts, there is only a part which uh, actually use it and update information there for their audience. And uh, overall, 45% of companies have an active status. Uh, they systematically upload some new information and uh, stay in touch with their audience. Uh, and of course, noticeable that it is less than a half of all social enterprises who are doing that. Uh, then, uh, 12% uh, for some reason are inactive. Uh, they do not use their social media. They do not update information there. And uh, there is a big part of enterprises that do not have social media account at all. It is 40% uh, and or uh, 47 companies out of 117. And uh, some enterprises uh, uh, create close or uh, private accounts and uh, so people of a certain community can see uh, the contents of it 
And uh, in this case, uh, in the case of present research, it is 3%. So basically 3% of uh, companies uh, cannot be publicly seen on the social uh, environment, the social environment. Uh, let's switch to our conclusions and here we would like to say that, of course, social enterprises in many countries have an, an important role um, in the realization of social inclusion and the uh, reduction of unsatisfied, unsatisfied part of the society. And uh, there are different ways and tools for social entrepreneurship development uh, and for countries with less developed social entrepreneurship, there is a big room for imagination, which uh, way they would like to use, what they would like to implement in their country. Uh, thirdly, it is that social enterprises in Latvia uh, use only partly uh, recent findings in digital marketing. And uh, uh, also, of course, this field can be improved uh, here in order to increase awareness about the field itself. And uh, education and training to obtain recent findings and application of uh, digital marketing uh, could be useful to make social enterprises uh, more uh, active in Latvia. And uh, based on the all information above, uh, we would like to make some suggestions for improvement uh, of social entrepreneurship field. And uh, firstly, it is the board members of the companies should be diversified by gender and age. Uh, secondly, it is, uh, of course, fair payment. Uh, without a big gap between the lowest and the highest payment should be provided. Uh, then it is uh, a labor force need to be diversified, uh, balancing the local and foreign employees, include young labor force. And uh, regarding the legal part of the research is possible to consider the implementation of some special legal structure for social enterprises. And this step can reduce unnecessary bureaucracy and also add some benefits for social enterprises. For example, such as, let's say, tax reduction. Uh, and uh, finally, education system, uh, especially lifelong learning programs, uh, can support social entrepreneurship in uh, different uh, ways. For example, provide research opportunities, uh, offer different courses for um, several parts of society involved in uh, social entrepreneurship, especially to increase competence in the application of digital marketing for uh, social entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, on this slide, you may see uh, references used for this presentation. And once again, we would like to thank organizing, organizers of this conference for having us and wish you to have a fruitful conference ahead. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, and please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions, uh, comments, or suggestions, and uh, you may see our emails uh, in the bottom left uh, corner. Once again, thank you for your attention.